The way we talk to our children becomes their inner voice. How many of you have heard of this quote by Peggy O'Mara? How many of you resonate with it? Do you realize what a great impact that our words can have on our child's future? This is actually a quote that all of us as parents should live by. Now, all of us guaranteed want the very best for our children. I know that. But sometimes we don't even realize it. And the words that we use have a very, very hurtful impact and effect on our children. As parents, it's very easy for us to slip into shaming our children. We don't even realize it. The words just come out of our mouth. You're such a baby. You're embarrassing me. Stop behaving this way. I don't see anyone else behaving like that. Have you ever said anything like this or something similar to this? I know in the moment you meant well, but these words are very damaging to our children. Now I know when parents use these statements, their main aim is trying to manage a situation, to curb some kind of behavior, to gain some control over a situation. But as we blurt out these things, we don't even realize that we are actually shaming our children. We think of them as something that is giving our children feedback or you know, constructive criticism and we're helping them to recognize a problem and perhaps motivate them to stop behaving in a certain way and change. Am I right? At that particular moment, this action and these words that you've spoken may seem to work because the behavior gets managed, it may stop, the child may change the way they're doing things, but the words have gotten out there and they've gone inside your child and they're sitting there. And sometimes they become so ingrained inside them, inside your child, it gets carried on into adulthood. These become part of who he believes he is and part of his personality. I'd like us first to understand what shame really means. Shame is a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrongdoing or foolish behavior. Basically, when we say words that bring attention to our child's mistakes or so-called misbehavior. Let's say, for example, our child drops a cup and it breaks. Immediately, one of the first reactions of most people will be, how could you be so clumsy? That was really not very clever. What were you thinking? How could you do that? Have you been in that position? Have you done that before? We may not even raise our voice. We talk in a very normal tone, but we put our child down, didn't we? And sometimes we even end up doing this in front of their friends or in front of other adults. How do you think your child felt in that moment? Just think about it. They felt like, I'm such a failure. I can't do anything right. My parents don't think I'm clever. My parents don't value me. Their self-esteem goes down and they really don't feel good about themselves. They don't think that I made a mistake. They think I'm a bad child. Now, as a parent, I know that was never your intention. You would not intentionally hurt your child. But can you also understand how you made your most precious person feel in that moment? Instead of telling them they made a mistake, you made them feel, they come away with it feeling I'm like I'm bad. Shame is actually a feeling that lasts much longer than we expect or we intend. These messages stick with the child for a very long time. There are so many different types of shaming. We have the shaming where we put down our children. That's so naughty. You're behaving like a spoiled brat. Stop being selfish. There are other times where we moralize. Good children don't do that. You behave so badly today. What about the times when we put age expectations on them? Grow up. Stop acting like a baby. Big boys don't cry. Now, I don't know about you, but there are many times as a grown adult, I feel like the day has been so frustrating and a good cry helps me get it all out of my, our system, out of my system. So what more a little child who can't even express their feelings? Then, of course, there's gender-based shaming. Toughen up. Don't be a sissy. And then when we put our expectations and shame our children because of that, you're hopeless. Why can't you be more than your, more like your friend? Why can't you do 
uh, do things the way John did it. None of the other children are acting the way you are. Make no mistake, there isn't necessarily anger when you speak these words, but they are considered to be shaming. As parents, we tend to resort to shaming when we feel frustrated or irritated or we're trying to gain control of a certain situation. But the statements we give out tell our children that they're not important. Their feelings don't matter to us. Shaming sends out the message to the child that they're wrong for wanting, for feeling, for needing. Many adults would argue and say, but you know what? It needed to be done. I had to teach my child something. I was teaching a lesson there. But think about it. Are we really teaching our children or are we harming them? Yes, I know that as a parent, there are countless frustrating moments. Parenting is hard. There are moments you want to tear your hair out. But think about it. Are our children intentionally annoying us? Or are they saying something to us? Are they telling us, I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I don't want to be controlled, I need a break? What we see as bad behavior is actually communication from our child. So is it possible then, instead of shaming our child, we try and look deeper and try and figure out what is my child saying to me? What is he trying to tell me? When we don't go deeper and try and figure out what is upsetting our child, what are the triggers, then we are neglecting their needs. For example, you have a child that's behaving overly aggressive. Perhaps there could be some trouble at school. Maybe they're being bullied. Maybe they're having some kind of conflict at home. We need to go in deeper and find out what is the message behind this behavior. Think about the last time when you felt so exhausted and tired. Didn't it make you grumpy? Didn't it make you irritable? So that's what happens to a child too. When they're overtired, they get grumpy, they throw a tantrum, they're sending us a message. And then, ironically, when we shame a child, that makes them feel powerless next to us and that again causes what we would call misbehavior. So who caused it in that situation? Was it them or was it us? As parents, when we're in these situations, we get triggered and we get fed up too and our feelings just start to boil over and then we end up saying something that's not very respectful or not very positive to our child. Basically, we end up taking out our frustration on our little ones. Yes, Irritation is a normal part of parenting. We are only human, but they are only children. They're not being demanding. The fact that you are having a hard time as an adult, that is something for you to deal with. It's not their fault. You are the adult here and you need to be in control of this situation and you need to manage your emotions. Now, I know it may seem like I'm coming off a little bit hard on you. That's not my intention at all. I promise you, we all make mistakes and the fact that you are here watching this video with me means and shows me that we all want to do better by our children, right? Shaming happens in all families. We are all guilty of it at one time or another. Even the most attentive, loving, nurturing parents are guilty of slipping in a comment like that once or twice. If you've realized that you're doing this, no problem. We're going to talk about how to fix it. I'll show you how we can guide our children towards more positive, appropriate behavior to get their needs met without shaming them. Are you with me? So before we go on to my tips, I'm going to ask you to hit the like button if you've enjoyed what you've listened to so far and make sure you're subscribed to our channel to keep coming back and get some more. And if there is anything particular that you'd like to know more about, please do leave it in the comments box. So my tip number one for helping your child towards more appropriate behavior is model the kind of behavior you want to see. You need to be the person that you want them to be. They watch you, they are picking up more than you would even realize and how you behave in your weakest moments is very, very powerful. There's no better way to influence your children other than more than the way you behave. Respond to them the way you wish for them to respond to others. If you want your child to be kind and speak gently, that's what you should be putting out there. Don't shame them when they do things wrong. 
talk to them, show them how we handle things when we make mistakes. When you make a mistake, take things in your stride. Don't get frustrated and angry with yourself either. Show them how to deal with a mistake in a gentle and positive way. Tip number two, cut out labels. You definitely don't want to stick labels on your child like lazy and naughty and bad and things like that because this gets stuck in a child, child's mind and uh, you know that they start thinking of them themselves in that way. Labels come very easily out of our mouth. We intend, you know, to be loving. We want to, you know, send a positive message to our children, but they can backfire because then a child tends to think of themselves that way. Oh, I'm just lazy. Oh, I can't work very hard. So we want to be very careful to cut out those labels. Tip number three, resist the urge to punish. Instead of punishing, why not set limits? Now, a lot of people are confused about what is punishment, what is setting limits. So let me just give you an example. Your child is playing with the soccer ball indoors, which clearly is not something we do. And uh, you go to your child and this would be setting limits. And you talk to them and say, you know what, I can see that you're enjoying playing with the ball, but it's a bit dangerous playing with the ball indoors. Would you like to take it outdoors? Or maybe you would like to play with something else if you'd like to stay inside. So we gave them two choices. We set a limit and we gave them choices within, within those limits. Punishment would be me taking the ball away. You're playing football in the house. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take that ball away. Why don't you go and sit in your room? That's a punishment for you. Tip number four, connect with your child. You have no idea how powerful this relationship with your child can be for you. When you develop and nurture and maintain strong, positive relationships with your child, then you will see so much of a drop in the, you know, the, the behavior that you deem as difficult or challenging. They want to comply with you. They want to work with you. They want to cooperate with you. Empathize with their emotions in a difficult situation. Instead of just shunning them, empathize with them. Try and validate their feelings it makes them feel understood and they will connect with you better. Now we have a few videos about these uh, topics. I'm going to link them up here and I'm also going to link them in the um, description. So you can click on them and they will, want, they will really help you um, to understand more about building connections with your children. Now nothing changes overnight. We have to practice. We have to be consistent if we want to break a habit that we are stuck in. You know it's easy to say things, but we have to work at reining it in and holding it back. One thing I know for sure is all of us have the same goal in mind. We want what is best for our children. We want to give our children every opportunity to thrive, to flourish, to grow up and be uh, adults that are well balanced and happy. Am I right? We also want to be that person in their life who is the most positive influence that they come to us and they look to us for guidance and for um, advice and more am i right but however shaming goes against this although at the time like i said before it may modify the behavior when they are young enough to you know listen to what we stay, say eventually they're going to grow up and that they're not going to listen anymore and we would have wasted time and we wouldn't have built those connections. Those connections are going to be what lasts all the way through adulthood. So let's break that cycle of shaming. When you're feeling overwhelmed, take a few deep breaths and think about how do I want to respond to my child that's going to be gentle, nurturing, and how can I make this a teachable moment? As parents, our words have a lot of power and we need to use that power for good. Trust me, when you yourself will handle a challenging situation in a calm and peaceful way, you're going to feel so good about yourself. Your child may not see the hard work that you've put in, they may not even notice the change in behavior, but the effects will be there and will last a lifetime. I hope this has helped you. If you would like to learn more about anything, if you have some questions, I'm so happy to come back and answer them. Please do subscribe to our channel. 
and hit the like button. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.